<laughs> I made it. <laughs> apparently, 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 things um, require me to actually um, be here for these to work. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, sorry for the jest. Sorry you had to wait so long. I hope all of you are prepared to make a, a droid for today because we will be making a droid. I will be talking about the droid. I will be talking about beginner character creation for those of you who are, who are here for that very purpose. <laughs> and I do have a slideshow for you. But first, I have to listen to a ad from PB Tech, apparently. They are not sponsoring me, by the way, people. So if you thought that they were, <laughs> that's not the case at all. <laughs> Any, anyway, oh my God, there's another ad. YouTube must really like me live streaming. Hence, um, there's, there's all these ads here. Okay, so you'll let me know if the sound or the, uh, the video is not very good or there's problems. And I will fix them right now if I can. Otherwise, let's get on with the show. Let's put up this poll. I usually put up a poll like this. Um, for those of you who have not been here before, normally what I do is I present everything, and uh, I use slides for that. Hello, Spirit Wolf. Hello, Todd. And I think there were some other people here, but I cannot see your name. So you'll have to type in something there for me to actually know that you are there. Uh, <laughs> how's it going, Shiner81? Okay. All right. So <clears throat> let's get on with the show. Um, and uh, bear with me as uh, I have slides available uh, in 4K and also... Um, <laughs> My sense of humor comes out, okay? <laughs> Don't hassle me. So I'm going to do a slideshow, and then I'm going to go to Q&A on questions and answers, and then we will build a character together. And I'm going to use D&D Beyond today, but that won't be always the case. Anyway. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Weller, and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, because, well... Yeah, this is the channel that says D and D. So I did kind of you're in the wrong place if you're not uh, here for D and D. Although I'm not, I'm partial to Star Wars as well. Anyway, um, Dungeons and Dragons Five E Lesson One: Beginner Character Creation. And like, what are you going to get from this? Like, is is it is it worth hanging around? Well, I'm going to give you an overview, and you'll decide. Um, my overview is we're going to go through character creation, the pre-check, all the things you do before you start creating your character. I'm going to talk about the different character sheet formats that are available to you. We're going to talk about the character creation basic steps. What are the basic steps? The advanced character details you need to fill out. Yes, there are the maths bits, you know, that's the maths stuff. And there's some other stuff as well. Miscellaneous recommendations, because I usually have recommendations when they do anything like this. And then character class essentials. And the essentials for today are the Druid by Gum. A difficult class to actually build and also a very difficult class to play if you ask me. My objectives. I will explain everything. I will demonstrate everything. And then I want you to participate with me as we actually create a character. That is my intention. That is what I want. Let's see if we can make that happen. D&D Beyond. Yes, they have a character builder for Dungeons & Dragons 5e. Uh, a lot of the options are free, but not all of them. There are some things you have to pay for. This is not a sponsorship for D&D Beyond, people. I'm just pointing you in the direction of a place where you can build characters, but not everything is free, okay? I'm just going to make that completely clear. Right, let's go on to the character creation pre-check. I've done this a few times. I want you to check with your dungeon master. Overall, when it comes to the um, starting your character creation, you have to talk to the dungeon master. Find out what player character options are available for the game being run. What are their house rules? Really important. Uh, does the dungeon master use um, uh, character creation, um, uh, different rules for character cr creation, or do they use different rules in play? Because they might affect how your, um, your character works mechanically in the game if you don't know what their house rules are. And, you know, some Dungeon Masters don't just use the player's handbook. Some some use um, a lots of different books. Some restrict what books you can use. You've got to talk to them. Build the character for the campaign on the information provided. Okay, rather than building a lone wolf like Chuck Norris or Arnold Schwarzenegger or something like that, or some edgelord, forget about that. Build it for the actual campaign itself. Now, your Dungeon Master should have provided some information on how to do that, like, <laughs> if they haven't, it's going to be very difficult, but they should have provided some information. And if they haven't, you're going to ask the relevant questions, and you're going to ask for details. You don't need to get all the spoilers, but you need to be um, given enough information about the adventure or the campaign 
so that you can actually make a character that fits that particular adventure or campaign in some way. Character creation always starts as a group discussion. It is not done um, in your bedroom alone in the dark or at your um, dining room table. It's always with a group. Now, why? Because a character is part of a team. It is part of a group machine. Your character is like a cog in a machine. You are playing a team sport. And uh, when you are involved in any kind of team sport, you do all of your discussion and planning and strategy together. You do all your training together. Uh, and then when you actually play the game, the sports, you actually do it together. And that's exactly the same approach you need to think of in terms of playing Dungeons & Dragons. Because it's not like a normal game where, you know, you just um, at loggerheads and it's competitive. This is a team sport. You work together to complete and, and achieve goals. That's essentially what it is all about. And hopefully have a good time along the way. Design characters around the three pillars of play. That's exploration, social interaction, and combat. Don't make a one-trick pony because if you just make something that's really good at combat, then you don't get to do anything when it comes to exploring. Exploring can be a huge part of the game, and so can the social interactions and communication with another NPC or monsters. So don't eliminate that as an option for your character. Don't focus on one thing. Otherwise, you just won't enjoy the experience quite as much. And this is from a person who likes to kill monsters and slay things. I am a slayer, hack and slash person. Okay, ask what ability score method is going to be used and when it's going to be used. Are you going to be using standard array, the point by system, or are you going to be rolling dice? And if you're rolling dice, make sure you roll your dice for your ability scores in front of the group, particularly the dungeon master. It is always bad form to roll them um, and not do it in front of the people that need to see it. Otherwise, you can be accused of cheating and rolling higher than you really um, rolled. So it doesn't matter how honest you think you are. If you're de dealing with people that don't really know you, you have to do it in front of them. Determine what hit point method is going to be allowed or and when it's going to be used. So this is, are you going to be using the average um, system for hit points or are you going to be rolling for your hit points? You'll find... Again, when you're rolling for hit points, you need to do this in front of the group, particularly the dungeon master, so they can see what you're rolling, okay? Now, some dungeon masters don't use um, rolling for hit points because it's hard to track, and they just can't remember who got what hit points every single um, level, and if they want to keep a track of what you're doing for whatever, whatever reason, it's almost impossible, so they often will fall back on, we're going to use standard array or point by. And actually, there's nothing wrong with those systems, but again, there's nothing wrong with using um, dice as well, provided you've got people who trust you, and uh, that's allowed at the table. It's as simple as that. Right, we've done all the pre-check stuff. Let's talk about the different character sheet formats. There are four that I want to talk about, the first one being the standard um, paper and pencil character sheet where you have a piece of paper, it's all laid out for you, and you fill in the details, or in the spaces. Now, you can use a pen, but pens can't be rubbed out. You'd have to cross it out. You're going to be changing a lot of stuff on the character sheet. I recommend making sure you have a pencil and an eraser or rubber. Now, for those of you who are thinking rubber and some other type of rubber, I'm from New Zealand, not North America. For me, a rubber does not refer to a condom. It refers to the thing on the end of the pencil. Filling out a... Um, PDF. You can get fillable PDFs that are character sheets as well. Very useful because you can also, once you sign it and save it, you can go back and make alterations to it. And then, of course, you don't run into the problem of a big hole going through your piece of paper with the paper version. Uh, there's also D&D Beyond has a character builder, and you can have up to six characters for free on there, but that's very limited in what you can actually do. So um, if you want to have more options, that maybe not be the solution to you. There are, in fact, many third-party character sheets that are printable, uh, fillable PDFs, and character builders or pieces of software or apps. You can get phone apps. You can get... Um, online uh, programs that allow you to build a character that aren't D&D Beyond. So there's lots of different options available to you. Oh, right, we were going to move on to the stuff that you're probably wanting, wanting in the first place, which is we're going to talk about character creation basic steps. What are the basic steps to building that character? You're going to select your level for your character. What level do you start at? Write that down on the character sheet. Now, 
you talk to your dungeon master, they will let you know, are you starting at level one? Are you starting at level three? Or are you starting at level five? Because not all groups start at level one. So check what level you're supposed to be and put that on the character sheet. That's where we start. Select the class for your character and write down the relevant details on the character sheet. You'll find the vast majority of the classes are in the player's handbook on page 100, uh, sorry, 45 to 119. So 45 to 119, you'll find the vast majority of the stuff is there. Put that down. And um, I would also like to point out, even though there are supplements, again, you need to check with your dungeon master before you start um, using those um, options. Okay, if they haven't approved them, don't use them. But the vast majority of the, the reasonable stuff is actually in the player's handbook. Select the race for your character and write down the relevant details on your character sheet. Um, now the races you'll find, most of the standard races are in the player's handbook. They're on page 17 to 43. There are many supplements and many different races available now. We have Monsters of the Multiverse. There are there's Volo's Guide to Monsters. There's many different books for different races. So check with your dungeon master which races are going to be used in your game. Uh, select the background for your character and write down the relevant details on your character sheet. Uh, you'll find backgrounds, uh, the vast majority are in the player's handbook on page 125 to 141. You can also, there's a section at the back of backgrounds in that chapter and it, it actually states you can make your own background. A lot of people um, miss this, but yes, you can take an existing background and make modifications. You just need to get it signed off by your dungeon master, but you can actually make your own background. There's some guidelines. Talk to your dungeon master, see if you can do this. If the backgrounds that are available don't really appeal to you. Okay, select a feat for your character if you get one uh, and write that down uh, and all the relevant details regarding it on your character sheet. Now, you're not always going to get a feat. Some um, characters will get a feat at level one. Um, some dungeon masters always give out a, a feat at level one. Some never use feats at all. Uh, if you're playing at level four, you may well have an opportunity to gain a feat if you're using those optional rules, which are probably not going to stay optional in the future, but we'll see how we go. Uh, so yeah, consider that. You'll find most of the uh, reasonable feats, the ones that are really important, are in the player's handbook on page 165 to 170. There are more of them in different supplements. Again, check with your dungeon master if you're allowed to use those. Determine the character's six ability scores. This does everything. So which method has been approved by your dungeon master and determine what those different ability scores are going to be. You'll see all the information around this is in the player's handbook on page 12 to 13. It explains how standard array works. It explains how the point buy system works. And then also it explains how to roll four dice. Uh, roll dice. Like you four dice, you roll and you ditch one of those dice. And usually you ditch the ones the lowest number. And that's what's going to, you add those numbers up and then you get your score. And you do that six times. That's if you're rolling for them. Okay, that's our basic steps. Now, it's time to look at the advanced stuff. All the things we need to sort of fill out that we haven't quite done yet. So if you are a spellcaster, you are going to need to select some spells. And yes, it can be quite confusing. <laughs> so when you select your spells for your character, make sure you write down the spell. You may not be able to fit all the information on the spell on your character sheet, but what you do want to do is you want to write down the page number that references where to look because you probably won't remember how the spells work. You'll find the vast majority of the spells are in the player's handbook on page 207 through to 289, but there are more spells in different books. I would suggest it's time to select and buy equipment. For your character, write the information and details of what equipment you have down on your character sheet. Now, you'll find that you have an option. You can either have a big chunk of money and you go and spend that to buy all your equipment, or you select the pre-package. I would select, um, suggest to you, go for the pre-package selection, and then you'll usually have at least 10 gold pieces left over. Then you go shopping as well. So do a combination, is my advice to you. Equipment, you will find in the player's handbook, is on page 143 through to 161. <sighs> now, maths. Who would have guessed playing a role play game involved mathematics? But there is. Um, fortunately for you, even though there are many different things you need to calculate, 
the maths behind them is not too complicated and uh, you'll need to be able to calculate your ability uh, modifiers, your proficiency bonus, your skill modifiers, your saving throw modifiers, your armor class, your hit points, what your initiative is, your passive perception, possibly your passive investigation, your weapon attack bonuses for your different weapons, your weapon damage formula, and there are so many of them to figure out, your spell attack bonus, your spell saving throw difficulty class. Whew. A lot of different things. Fortunately for you, there are lots of things on the internet that will do all of that for you, so you don't have to figure out uh, how to do it, and also you don't have to worry about making a mistake. Okay, that's one of the things I would suggest. This is why I'm suggesting D&D &D Beyond, uh, certainly as a first point of call. Select or draw a character portrait for your character. It's not vital, but it really does help connect you and your concept of your image and your imagination of what your character looks like and you put it into a physical medium. Now whether that's digital or whether that's hand drawn, it doesn't matter. Okay, you can paint it. Heck, you can get your um, your kids, if you've got kids, to paint it for you or draw it for you. They're probably quite happy to do that. Okay, so like with everything that I do, I always have some miscellaneous recommendations for you. And so I do again have miscellaneous recommendations. I want to make it clear right now that this is not about optimization. Okay, what we're talking about is just building a character and then what you do with it after that is really up to you. But my recommendation to you is that character backgrounds can be anything you want them to be or need them to be. Do not need to select pre-made backgrounds to optimize your, cl um, your, your class or your race in some way. Okay, remember what your background is is what your character did be be before they became a hero or an adventurer. So it's all right to have a background that isn't particularly related to uh, what class or race you are at all. In fact, you can make adjustments to that background. I want to reiterate, you can make adjustments to that background. You just need to talk to your dungeon master. The rules do allow it. Okay, what race you select no longer has any real bearing on the character whatsoever. Um, this It's now very flexible what you can do. They've taken away the, um, the bonuses from the race. They are now... Um, going to be positioned, uh, well, they're not sort of taken away, should I say, they are flexible, they're not fixed in where they can be positioned, so you can pretty much do what you like, and then of course you've got some different race um, features and abilities that you will um, use, but it is perfectly fine for a race that is a total to also be a spellcaster, or to be um, uh, outside of the, the realm of what they are usually really good at, like it, it makes sense that races do have individuals within their society that do everything, um, and, and that's fine. Create what you think is going to be fun and interesting and will work for you and your group and your dungeon master. I'm going to say this right now, select adventuring gear, select adventuring gear. Don't forget about this, it's easy to do. Any player character can do it. There are no restrictions, so go and use what money you have and 10 gold pieces is, is enough to buy quite a bit of stuff that you will find very useful it will help prepare you to solve problems and challenges and it will assist you in ways that you weren't expecting and I have a whole series of videos that talks about how to use adventuring gear or mundane adventuring gear in your game that is not magical and it's still useful to you so go and buy stuff now I'm hoping that with all of this advice, oops, I almost forgot one thing, one thing more that I need to mention on my miscellaneous recommendations. There is no way you can remember everything in the player's handbook when you're starting out. So note down the page number in the player's handbook or whatever book you're using for whatever feature you're using right beside it. So if you have a spell, you won't be able to fit the spell description into your character um, sheet, but what you can do is write down the spell and beside it the page number where you need to look so you can reference the spell description quickly because you won't be able to remember it more than likely. Same thing with your race abilities, same thing with all of your class features, and the same thing with your background feature as well. Make sure you have a page number there for them. And that should really pretty much get everything done that you need to get done. But we're not finished. But but for now, I want you to um, ask your questions, give your feedback. Let me know uh, what you think in the chat and in the uh, comment section. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.
Don't freak out, people. I just need a drink of water because we're doing the droid next. You thought I had forgotten, didn't you? I haven't forgotten. No, 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 no. No, I just need to. I've been talking for the last almost half an hour, so I need to breathe. And I'm cooking right now. So we're going to talk about the um, the droid. Again, I'll, I'll make it clear. I'm not talking about trying to optimize your character. I'm just talking about what you probably need to do to make sure you're not fighting the class. A droid is actually a very difficult um, class to play. And therefore, you do actually need to think a little bit about what you're doing. Otherwise, um, you can balls it up quite nicely. Droids, the basics to your droid. Pretty obvious. Wisdom should be your highest ability score because it's directly connected to how well you use magic. It's wise to increase your wisdom <laughs> uh, to 20 reasonably quickly. I wasn't intending for that to be a pun, but it did work out that way. Um, constitution is your second most important ability score uh, because they relate or it relates to how long your druid will survive in a battle or a fight or when dealing with traps or dealing with any kind of threat, frankly. So you need to make sure that that's um, the second most um, or highest uh, ability score. Next, proficiency with the nature skill is kind of expected by a druid uh, because you are meant to apparently know a bit about the natural world or at least survival. Even if you don't have the, the nature skill as a proficient skill, please at least take the survival um, skill because, because you will get razzed. I know, I know it would happen at my table. It will happen at other tables. Please take that one. All the other skills available to a, a droid are excellent and they fit the class. So pick whatever you like after that, but at least take nature as a skill. And if you don't want to take nature, at least take survival. Droids need armor uh, to survive. If they don't wear armor, they're going to die. But you will need to get your own made up because unfortunately there's this weird thing <laughs> with droids. Um, generally they don't wear metal and armor is made out of metal so you have to actually have armor that's not made out of metal now it, it does exist but you need to talk to your dungeon master about can i get this type of armor but it's going to be made out of something other than metal and then of course it might be made out of i don't know um the armored plates off an animal um some sort of dermal bone or it's going to be made out of cartilage i mean who knows what it is um, maybe it's the scales off a dragon, psh, but it's not going to be metal. So you need to have a discussion with your dungeon master. And it would be good if your dungeon master is open to the idea of giving them some sort of flexibility around this. You, they don't have to say yes to dragon scale armor, okay? But some sort of armor that isn't made out of metal would be kind of helpful. Um, because wild shape is so complex, don't tell me it's not, it is. Uh, because wild shape is complex... And it's also very dependent on the dungeon master approving how and what you get. <laughs> um, check with them about what animals will be allowed and then make up a list. Okay, you get certain access to certain things as stipulated by Wild Shape, but dungeon masters seem to be very finicky about what sort of animals they will allow, even with the guidance provided in the, um, the player's handbook. My suggestion is have a talk to the dungeon master about Wild Shape, how it's going to work, and just make up a list of animals that, that they will allow you to, to transform into. Sometimes dungeon masters require you to have seen that animal before you can transform into it, whether it be polymorph or wild shape, and so a discussion is going to take place around that. Select Thorn Whip as your damage dealing cantrip. I was, I was really hard pressed to sort of like, should I just tell them what to take? And I'm going to say, just take Thorn Whip as your damage dealing cantrip. It doesn't do as much damage as some of the other cantrips, but some of those other cantrips that you get access to they're a trap. <laughs> they're a trap for a new player, so leave them alone. You can actually do quite a lot with Thorn Whip, um, even though it doesn't do the most amount of damage. And then the rest of your um, you uh, your cantrips are better off to be utility. And to get a better balance to your gameplay and make it flexible. So you want flexibility when you're a spellcaster, and a druid is a spellcaster. It's a no-brainer. Um, things like Guidance, excellent cantrip. You know, probably one of the best cantrips in the game. Um... Droidcraft is actually a very good cantrip, and if you are not convinced, go watch my video that explains how Droidcraft can be used in your game. Mending is also a very good spell, 
but uh, and a cantrip, but it's kind of situational. So I'm always going to sort of push you more in the direction of take guidance or droid craft. Um, guidance is very easy to use, droid craft more difficult to use, and mending tends to be one of those cantrips that uh, is still situational but super useful when it does come up. I'm going to I'm going to say this now. I'm going to um, say avoid poison spray. I'm sorry, avoid poison spray because of the very short range, and a lot of monsters are resistant or immune to poison, and so it's just not going to work. What you thought was going to be a good idea, it always looks desirable. You see, oh, D12 damage. Wow, cool, and then you find out that you have to stand in front of something to be able to do this. <laughs> and it's not necessarily a good idea. And then they're immune to um, poison damage or even the poison condition. Not that poison spray is really going to help with that. Uh, Shillelagh is a good um, cantrip for dealing damage at low level only. Uh, Shillelagh cannot cope with uh, medium to high level play. So it's the kind of thing that if you pick up, you'll find you'll only really get to use... Um, at the very beginning, but shillelagh is a, essentially a magic weapon, and magic weapons at low level are very rare, so you will certainly find it useful at low level, but unless your dungeon master will allow you to ditch shillelagh and swap in something else, I would suggest leave it alone. Next, you only get a few first level spells at character level 1, like you, you really do only, you only get a very, very small selection of first level spells at character level 1. So ensure you have the better spells like Goodberry and Fairy Fire. Probably right up the top there is Goodberry and Fairy Fire. Select any of the following spells for a droid. As far as I'm concerned, all of these uh, at first level are excellent and will certainly you will find a use for them um, once you get access to more. Uh, Goodberry, if you haven't already got it. Healing Word is good. Um, nothing wrong with cure, um, cure wounds. Good, good spell. Detect magic. If nobody else has detect magic, grab it. You'll use it a lot. Entangle, a very good um, spell. Uh, fairy fire. If you haven't already got it, grab it because you can now uh, potentially find those invisible um, creatures and monsters. And you can also highlight uh, a selection of creatures or monsters and make them easier to hit. It's a really good buff spell. And um, you're probably going to want one of the few casters that have access to Fairy Fire in the first place. Speak with animals. If you want to speak with animals, this is the one to go with. And then Thunder Wave. Uh, you really can't go wrong with making a, um, a spell um, produce some sort of um, sonic damage. And this basically, Thunder Wave is, is kind of like that. Uh, the best feats for a druid will generally be the following. I would say Lucky for any class. Lucky is always good. Alert is always good. Uh, Warcaster is a good um, feat for a, a droid. Um, more around when you are using concentration. So if you're using a spell that is concentration, then Warcaster becomes effective. Uh, you'll, I, generally what tends to happen with Warcaster, unless you have spells that are um, concentration, you won't need it till level 4. But if you have selected your first level spells and you have one that is concentration then Warcaster becomes important. Healer is an excellent feat, highly overlooked. Tough is a good feat for a droid, and mobile, surprising, surprising, um, mobile is actually pretty good for a droid as well. That's the basics around a droid, like what I would sort of push you in the direction of. I'm not going to prescribe you for anything. I'm not going to tell you what is optimal, okay? That's up to you, okay? This is just the essentials. All right, okay, <clears throat> let us go back to my face. Uh, we are going to be building a character very, very soon, um, but I'm going to go through the chat and see if, oh, well, let's hope I can keep up the chat. First off, how are we doing? Hello, everybody. Um, oh, I almost forgot, you will need dice, people. Um, so my advice to you is have your phone open. So what you want to do is when to grab your phone, have it open, listen to me, and watch what I'm doing on my on your phone, and then either get a piece of paper or a character sheet or a pencil or a scrap piece of paper if you want to, and then you're going to, or if you've got a laptop open or your computer, and you're going to build, you can build your character along with me as I build a character. Like, pff, why not? Let's do that. I think that's a good idea. Uh, so, But you'll need pencil, and you'll definitely need, 
if you're using paper that is but you'll definitely need some dice okay you'll need some dice so let me just scroll through this little sucker here oh another earthquake oh are we going to get hit by a big earthquake in new zealand so that would be bad okay so let me have a look at the chat and then we'll go into it and get on with things <clears throat> oh okay oh man no 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 all right so my poll says is this the first time you have made a droid for dungeons and dragons 5e and yes 43 percent okay for those of you who are new and have never made a droid and you want help today is the day people so my advice to you is Go away, um, YouTube. I'm not answering your question right now. Um, my, sorry, my, <laughs> my, my advice to you is please ask your questions. And if you want me to help make a character for you, you just need to let me know, okay? If you are completely new. Um, the best way to support me continuing this weekly program is on Patreon. You can pay as little as a dollar a month. And uh, you basically, you support all five programs that I run, and there's quite a few. This is just one of them, um, and we do all the different classes each week. Uh, eventually, we'll get around to everything. Um, otherwise, Super Chats and Super Stickers are another way to go. Okay, uh, no, 50%. They have made droids before. Unfinished, 4%. Well, let's see if we can finish that 4% out of 24 votes. Okay, let me get through the chat fairly quickly. Spirit Wolf, hello, hello. How are you, Spirit Wolf? Um... Uh, Todd is here. Hello, Todd. How are you? Uh, carnivore, a carnivore droid. How do we get to a carnivore droid? There's a conversation that's been taking place, and I have was not involved. Uh, involved apparently, you guys have been chatting a lot before all of this, right? Um, <laughs> uh, or a wear a wear ball? Mm, okay, all right. Let's go through. You guys are having a good time. You're obviously in a, a happy. It's a happy time for everybody. How's it going, Shiner eighty one? Nacho Nacho Man is a patron and supports me on Patreon. Welcome. Um, we've got Bobby XL. Hello. You can't wait. Good. We are about to get started. Chuck Norris the droid. That's right. Chuck Norris is a tree hugger. Um, <laughs> or are the trees scared of Chuck? I don't know. <laughs> uh, World War II general. Um, you guys are going off on some sort of tangent here. Overboard Miniature Gaming, hello, uh, also a patron and a moderator in the uh, in the chat, welcome. Uh, David Rose, hello, I finally managed to call you David Rose and not David Ross, how's that? That's an achievement, right? <laughs> it's, been, it's been a long time coming. F finally, I actually get your name correct. Uh, well, we kind of, well, I kind of have, I have. <laughs> not, not always, but so, sometimes I get it wrong. <laughs> Um, I'm hoping that while I'm um, dragging this out, you guys are getting organised. Now, Todd is also a patron and supports me on Patreon. Uh, almost forgot that. Uh, where are we? Hello, Scott. How are you, Scott? Uh, Brian Murray. Hello. How are you? Uh, just subbed uh, to the Patreon. Yeah. Ah, did you, Brian? I, I Look. Yes, you are. I just see it. I just see it now. It must have just popped up. It's got pending. Welcome. Welcome. You are going to be surprised just how much stuff you get on Patreon. It's a lot. And the, the truth is, Brian, I'm way behind. There's about 30 documents that I'm supposed to release, and I just don't know how I'm going to do that. I'm going to have to do it on my... When I take time off in about two months, I'll just have to put it all up. Um, um, oh, so yeah, the shop, the app shop's been whack. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, yes, it is. Definitely. Ironwood, well, yeah, why not? I suppose it still would, right? Ironwood. Does anybody know what Ironwood is? The Isle of Dread um, reincarnate has stats for bone and wicker armor. Thank you, Scott. Good, good advice. Hello, Pale Rider. How are you doing? My droid went to exotic Kamzu where he was a kid. Uh, you've seen the animals. That's right. Okay, All right. Uh, um, Fender. Hello, Fender. Also a patron, supports me on Patreon, and also our moderator in the chat today. So uh, I don't want anybody to be scared off. There are a lot of regulars here. They will look after you. You just need to just type stuff in. Um, Ugly Weirdo, it was good to meet you the other day. Oh, for those of you who don't know, I have uh, a Discord where you can come and chat to me, okay? 
And what do you got here? I've been playing the game since I came out, and I don't know, you've not made a droid. I have, look, I've only played a droid a couple of times, and I wound up playing a droid that one of my friends made that was um, optimized, and it killed everything. <laughs> it killed everything. Um, <laughs> the droids are not pussies. I'll tell you that now. Pale Rider. For armor and a few games we um, we stole from Palladium Games. Ah, okay, at fifth level you had to find uh, a sacred place. Use da, da, da. okay, all right. Driders gift set of armor made by Biomancy. Biomancy, interesting. Forest Rico, hello, Forest Rico, welcome. I think this is the first time I've seen you in the chat, and welcome to the chat. Um, <laughs> vegetarian prerequisite okay I feel like we better get onto this otherwise if I don't you guys are going to go completely um, bananas um, Charles Butler hello welcome again anyway we could uh, find <laughs> the artist name for the piece behind you this one here I actually don't know I don't know who did the, the mushroom town or whatever um, okay so look my chat is working on my phone and we could easily get distracted, but we we actually have an hour, just under an hour and 20 minutes to get a character built. So let's just do it, shall we? Right. I think that's the best way to approach this is let's just do it. Um, I need somebody who has never made a character to be before. I want you to tell me, do you want me to use the free version of D&D Beyond or do you want me to make um, uh, just use everything? Okay, please let me know if you've never made a character before. I know there's a lot of people in here who have, and they will pipe up, but if you've never made a character before, tell me if you want the free version, and I'll do that. That gives you a little bit of time while I shif shuffle over to different screens. Um, now, let's see, and it's uh, going to work, and bum, 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 and then, am I in the right place? Because I remember, like, like last time I did this, um, I kind of balls things up and I put my face in the most inappropriate location. I think it's in the right place. There we go, people. Uh, that, you'll let me know if my big head is in the way. So, yeah, you just say, Fred, can't see your face is in the way. Can you, can you get out of the way? Can you please make your head smaller? Um, and I'll do my best. You want everything? Yes, first time. Thank you, Forrest. You want everything. I'm trying to figure out why to work a circle of spiders into the... All right, okay. Okay, right. So here we are. We're going to use everything today. Now, I'm going to show you, before I do this, but I'm still going to show you how to do the free... Um, access the free version as well. Okay? But I'm not going to go through the process of building it there. Just so you know, Okay. Right, so first off, my character, go to DNT Beyond, make an account, it's free. My character, under collections, you can have, as I said, up to six characters for free. Uh, we can delete a few characters, we don't need to have all of these. I think we made this character last time. Blah. So you can type in here, delete. Pardon me. And poof, gone. Just like that, that was easy. Uh, we can do that again if we want to. Uh, let's go here and delete. Bam. Okay, they just got eaten by T-Rexes and, uh, and and either a dragon or some sort of uh, other creature. Never mind. <sighs> no more characters. So once you get in here, I have three that I can create if I want to. Hit the create a character button. Now this will give you the free option. It's either randomize, which you don't want, quick build, which you really don't want unless you're really in a hurry. And then there's the standard system. And you want to be walk walk you through. Press show text information. But we're not doing that because um, Forrest has indicated he wants to build a character that uses everything. So uh, my campaigns, I am part of somebody else's campaign. And we're going to go in here. And once we've done that, we need to go to, uh, not that one, not that one, view the campaign. There it is. And once we're in their, their campaign, we can then create a uh, unassigned or assigned character. So we're going to create an unassigned character. Create unassigned character. This will give me options, um, pretty much anything. And the person who made this available to me, because um, I don't pay for this, it's expensive. So actually, I have somebody who's um, offered it to me, and that's I do thank them. And it's not D&D &D Beyond right now. 
okay? All right, let's, um, let's start at the first process as we've got to create a name. So we can either randomize option here, so we can press the random button like that, and ta-da, we've got a name. And then we can press it again, and up as uh, another name. Try to find a name, Catherus, Catherus, Catherus. I can spell, I can spell that, and I can pronounce it. I think that's right. Um, Catherus. We can also go to this little button underneath here. And it says Names by Fantasy um, Name Generator. Great place. Has names that are fantasy related, different race names as well. You don't have to necessarily use all the names in the player's handbook because all the races do have like names to them if you want to use that. But it has stuff from different cultures all around the world. Like that's really cool. Gnu, Gru. You went Gru. Spirit Wolf. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll take Gru. We'll do Gru today. If somebody has a better name, I, I, I actually I haven't asked you guys to name name a character before. Let's let's I'm going to stick with Gru for now. Hashtag. Uh, give the character a name. And yeah, let's uh, let's see what you come up with. Like, can't be that hard, surely. Here we go. Uh, so <laughs> we're not going into what is the best we're not going down that now there's an option to put in a portrait you can click this button and dnt beyond provides you with a portrait so you don't have to try and draw it or get your kids to draw it if you don't want to if you have kids that is uh critical role we can turn that on if we want we can turn on rick and morty we can non-core stuff we'll turn that on as well um, digital dice, we can have them on if we need to. We're not probably going to use that though. Um, optional class features, well, we'll just turn that on anyway. Customize your origin, we can turn that on. And then your advancement type. Talk to your dungeon master. Are you going to be using milestones or exp experience points? If it's experience points, you want XP. Otherwise, it's milestones. I like milestones myself. And since I'm the dungeon master and the player, I'm going to pick that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really, but I'm, I'm just playing with you. Anyway, um, hit points type. So you can you can go in manually, you can select the manual option or the fixed. I'm just going to go with fixed, it's a bit simpler for me. Turn on feats, multi-classing if you require, but we're not only going to level one so today, so it's not going to make any difference for you, frankly. I think that's kind of a bit pointless, but I'll turn it on anyway, just in case it comes up. If somebody says, oh, it has to be this, and we'll see how we go. Um, show um, level scaled spells, so that's on. And encumbrance, are we using it? No encumbrance, are we using the variant encumbrance rules or are we just using encumbrance? I'm gonna stick with we use encumbrance for now. Uh, Chuck, Randy of the Redwoods. Oh my gosh, um, call it Keish. <laughs> Chuck, all right, turn off the coin weight. I don't think we need to worry about the coin weight. Well, I mean, we could turn it on, but it wouldn't matter because we're not gonna have any coins. We're gonna spend all our money. Okay, we can turn it on, how's that? It's the first time I've done something different, okay. Now, you have these things called ability scores and modifiers. You're very rarely going to use the ability score number. It's the big number. The smaller number that's associated with it is the, the modifier. And you use the modifier more than anything else. So I want you to put that at the top and make it the biggest number so it's easy to reference. All right, so we go modifier. And then public. I don't mind you guys seeing this character so it doesn't matter. Um, draw lock. Draw lock. Draw lock. Okay. All right. I haven't changed the name. I can come back. So don't worry. If you feel like, oh, I made a mistake with the name, you can go back and edit it. It's all right. Don't worry. We're not fixed and locked in just yet. Moving on. Next button. Now you can also go back. There's a back button here as well. I've been talking so fast. I'm going to treat, drink some water. We're going to have to pick a race now. Um, pick a race. <clears throat> Now, Forrest, if you hadn't figured it out, I know everybody else is throwing in names, which is, is great. It's, it's cool. But if you throw in a name since you were the first time you've ever built a character, I'll put that name in for this character. Okay? Hashtag. Hashtag. Pick a race. If you haven't figured out, now this is a very interactive um, live stream where uh, your choices do make, make a difference. Craving Nuts. Craving Nuts, you want to call a character Craving Nuts. I've turned on all sources, so we're using everything under the sun. Okay, so what can you choose out of the different races that are here? We can have Aracocra, Azimar, Edge is Nasi, 
uh, Astral Elf. We could have an Auto Gnome, a Bugbear, a Centaur, a Changeling. Custom Lineage, please don't say that. I don't really feel like doing that. <laughs> It'd take me a bit more time. A Deep Gnome, Dragonborn, one of my favorites. Shiner81 said a Fairy. Uh, sorry, pardon me, I'm gassy. We can go with a Fairy. A Fairy Druid. Why not? Fairy Druid. There's lots of options. You can see, like, oh, do I have enough choice for races? I think we do. I think we have plenty. Right, Fairy it is. Um, starts with F. Do I remember how what my alphabet is? Is it there? There we go. Okay, so the Fairy for Mordenkainen presents Monsters of the Multiverse. Oh, we, we've done a total before. Talks like Owen Wilson. It could be, but no. Shiner81, you, you uh, insp inspiration followers, Earth Genasi. Okay, so Forest Rico, you are completely new to this. I know the others aren't, okay? Inspiration um, follows, I don't know if you've never made a droid before. But at this point, I am going to shift our fairy to the Aladrin, which is ugly weirdo's gone with fairy as well. Sorry, people, I'm going with Aladrin. I'm going to do it. From Mordenkainen's Monsters of the Multiverse. Doesn't look like any Aladrin we remember. <laughs> okay. It goes wow. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get to um, assign some stuff, which is cool. Um, we're going to select a season uh, at some point. <laughs> uh, we're going to have sizes medium, speed of 30 feet, because like all of them do. And what, what surprise, we have dark vision as well. Most races do. And Fey Ancestry allows us to uh, have advantage on saving throws when we have to sort of worry about charmed, being charmed. Cool. Fey Step, bonus action. Cool. Uh, different, different abilities there. Keen Senses, proficiency in perception. Like the super skill is there. We have Trance. Mate, we've got all the best things under the sun. It's good, isn't it? Life is good. Okay. So overboard uh, miniature gaming. I spotted, I didn't spot you, Joe. Um, also a patron and also a moderator. Thank you, mate. Okay, Aladrin it is. Let us appease the new people. Here we go. We've got it now. Some choices. If you see an exclamation mark beside something as you're going through, that means you have to make a choice. You have to select something. There are a couple of things we have to select. Okay, so now that we know that, we're going to go and choose this. <clears throat> choose at level one option our options are our different seasons pick a season autumn spring summer winter i don't mind whoever chooses it first i will put it in fast okay <clears throat> now uh make sure you have some dice ready people i have been saying this but it's going to come up pick a season pick first first season is the one i'll select pick a season We're gonna we're gonna go fast today. Pick a season. Uh, eat eats meat first be, <laughs> because his best friend is a man eater. Venus flytrap. <laughs> really? Autumn it is. Big kid. Thank you very much. Uh, Big kid is also a patron. Hello, buddy. How's it going? Um, uh, so now creature type is uh, humanoid, and we've got our size is medium. We've got our speed is 30 feet. We have got dark vision. We have fate ancestry. And we've got a phase step choice. Whoa. So we'll go down here. A couple of different things. Um, so we have to decide which one of the uh, the ones we're going to select. Like, so we can, can I say you don't have to pick autumn as wisdom. I, I mean, it, you could. And it kind of makes sense. It sort of goes with that. We've kind of already picked autumn already. We'll just pour, pick autumn. 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 Okay. Autumn it is. Wisdom. So it'll be based off our wisdom, and since we're a druid, we use wisdom for our spell casting. So it all kind of fits. So what does that mean? What do we get? Immediately after you use your face step, um, up to two creatures of your choice that you can see within 10 feet of you must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or be charmed by you for one minute. Holy Toledo! Or until you, you or your companions deal or deal any damage to the creature. Blimey, I see why you wanted that. I hadn't read that carefully enough. <laughs> I am going through Monsters of the Multiverse to do a review for next week, but I did not realize. Okay, let's go for Trance. We have two choices. 
we need to choose a weapon and tool proficiency. So <clears throat> up to you what we do, like there's tools or weapons, and we get to pick two. So is it going to be a tool? Is it going to be a weapon? What is it? Hashtag pick a tool or weapon. Uh, where are we? Weapon. Uh, weapon proficiency. Proficiency. Got it? There. <clears throat> so while you are deciding on your choice, <clears throat> I'm going to try to see if I can get some water down me before I pass out. I like them. I, I just like the autumn as a season. Uh, do you? The whip. Where we're gonna go with the whip? That's that's our first choice. Now, do you want a tool? I I, I look. You know how I feel about like try to spread things out a bit. Try to spread things out. There's our whip. Carpenter. Sweet. It's dealing with wood. Let's do that. Carpenter. Thank you for that. Carpenter's tools. That was easy, wasn't it? Nothing to it. Okay, moving on. Next. <coughs> <coughs> Oh, what class do we pick? Oh, hang on, we're doing the draw today, aren't we? So we don't have to worry about making that choice. <laughs> Here it is, our druidic um, stuff, okay? Our spell casting, and we won't be getting wild shape till level two, but that's all right. We can always come back and deal with wild shape and druids another day, but we'll level one for now. Um, thank you for that, Spirit Wolf, and thank you for that um, big kid. I do appreciate that. Okay, so remember... Ask your dungeon master, what level are you starting at? And when they say you're level 20, find a different game. It's going to be too hard. Okay. No, level one. We're starting at level one. That's what we're going to do with level one. And, and then we're going to go over here to our proficiencies. Look, our hit points are already determined for us. At level one, you get maximum hit points. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an eight-sided dice at level, um, level one. So you just take eight plus your constitution modifier once we know what that is. We don't know what that is yet, but we will. And um, after that, we'll be using the average or we'll be rolling dice to determine what we get, plus our constitution modifier. The average is a five um, from level two upward. And if you're rolling, then you'll roll an eight-sided dice and add your constitution modifier after level one. Right, moving on. Uh, proficiencies. More choices. Don't you like this? Skills. We need two skills. Hashtag. Pick. Two skills. Um, pick skills. Okay. All right. Picking skills, people. Pick skills. Uh, we get two of them. I am taking nature before anybody says it, mate. It's going down there. I just done a video and said they're going to raise you if you don't take nature or survival. So, of course, I'm taking nature. So, we now have perception in nature. Hammer. No, we don't have the skill um, hammer here. You have animal handling, arcane, insight, medicine, religion, and survival. Um, nature and survival. Fine. I am fine with that. That's all right. We're going to get, remember, our background will give us more skills. So it's, it's, it's not the end of the world. It's all, it's, it'll be fine. We'll be, we'll be good. Okay. Right. Moving on. Um, we don't have to do anything with that. No more choices. No more exclam exclam exclamation marks. Let's move on to our ability score. What method are we going to use? Are we going to be using standard array? Are we going to roll for them? Because I'll let you roll. Uh, or we can go point by. Which system are we going to use? Hashtag. Hashtag. We go pick an ability score uh, method. Our oh, generation. Generation method. I wish I wish buttons on a phone were bigger. I have a big finger. How am I supposed to press this thing? Standard array. Big kid. Okay, standard array it is. We haven't done standard array for a while, so I'm I'm all good with it. You, look, I am I'm clearly in a silly mood as well, mate. I it's all right. I can live with it. I will survive because I have survival. <laughs> I, just, I, I just picked it. So let's let's do the, the standard array. Standard array gives you a whole bunch of stuff, and we just basically pick what we need to stick it into. So our, our what was our highest score supposed to be in? Wisdom. Wisdom. Fifteen. We get a fifteen, a fourteen, a thirteen, a twelve, a ten, and an eight. <gasps> oh, but no choice with it. I'm putting it here. 
Constitution should be the next one. The 14's going there. Now I'm going to give you some choices, okay? Because we can stick the others in different places. This is where you get to actually um, make some decision. <clears throat> I don't start my players at level 20. I don't do that. I would not do that to them. And to be frank, most of the people in my home group d d always want to start at level 1. Because um, there's always the chance that somebody will die and they're looking forward to that. Uh, but that's my group, okay? <laughs> the chant for reincarnate, reincarnate comes out every single time. Okay, so uh, we need to decide where we're going to stick our 13. What will 13 be? Okay, so our choices are we can t put it into dexterity, strength, intelligence, or charisma. Uh, intelligence or charisma. Well, is it, which one is it? Is it going to be intelligence next? Intel big kid said intelligence. Fine. Okay, intelligence it is. Intelligence. Okay, and then charisma after that. Fine, I'll leave that charisma. Okay, uh, we're not finished. We need... Um, <laughs> Let's just ask which one we might want to be the weakest one. Like, which? where's the 8 going? Where's the 8 going? Thank you, um, Shona81, and thank you, Scott. I do appreciate it. Okay, hashtag. Where does the 8 go? Um, so, oh, somebody's already typed it in. Um, strength 8, Dex 10. Uh, well, I'll go Strength 8. The, the rest of the, what you've written down there, it's too late. <laughs> you've you've got to be... By the way, people, you've got to be quick. These these guys who've come, come in here, they, they, they know they have, like, pff, they know the routine pretty well. So that's what we've got. But it's all right because, as I said, uh, when it comes to making decisions about stuff, we can spread our scores around because um, our... Aladrin has a lot of options. We can put a plus two somewhere, a plus one somewhere, or we can put plus one somewhere, uh, two, uh, three plus ones in different areas if we want to, or a plus two and a plus one. So which one is it going to be? Are we going to go three plus ones or plus two plus one? Uh, hashtag. Um, pick. Uh, bonus system and that is uh, three plus ones or plus ones or come on Fred or uh, plus plus two and plus one come on and plus one uh, that order, get it in there. Okay. 12 across the board. Um, so first, I don't know that we can do 12, we can't do 12 across the board. One of them is going to be a, um, a dump. But what we can do is I can put the 12, and um, then put the 2 into strength. Okay. R, R11. Yeah, okay. So, so Shine is saying a 2 and a 1. Um, Ugly Widow said um, um, three ones. You, you look to me like you want to get rid of the bonus, uh, the the penalty on strength, which I, I don't think that's a bad idea. Okay, so <laughs> I get I get where you're going with this. Um, 12, 12 across the board would be point by, and this is standard array. We kind of have to have a. So I'll tell you what, we'll we'll do this. This this is where we'll stick it. We'll put this. We'll go with two and a one. So that we can even out the strength. Okay, we won't have a dump stat. Two and a one. And um, I'm going to put the two. It's not the two. That's the two into strength. So we'll ditch no more penalties on strength. Okay, <laughs> it's probably a bad idea. Um, that's not true. If you're wearing armor, you will need strength to wear the armor you're carrying. Okay. <laughs> So you do need strength, otherwise you don't have 
the ability to carry the armor you're wearing. Okay, so now the plus one can go pretty much anywhere. It can go into wisdom, it could go into um, intelligence and be effective. Anywhere else it's probably not going to do anything. But where does the plus one go? Uh, hashtag where does the plus one go? And oops, plus one and it's it's not we're not it's not a wizard it's a it's, it's a droid. How do we get to bark skin? Bark look bark skin is a terrible spell. It's a terrible spell. <laughs> and it's a spell and it doesn't last that long. It's not like mage armor. <laughs> it's a terrible spell. Um, Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Okay, wisdom is everywhere. Okay, all right, okay, all right. Let's. So we want to get that sixteen in there. So that's fine. I, I, okay, I understand. Wisdom, 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 wisdom. Okay. So we have a plus three in our wisdom for our our droid. So our droid's actually looking pretty good, and that's the that is the benefit of using standard array. Although I do like point point bike a lot myself, but that doesn't matter because it's not about me. It's about you. So we've made our selections for our um our race nice and flexible, as you can see. Strength is going to be an eight, a 10, because we modified it up. Uh, we got our dexterity at a 10, so it's average. Constitution is a 14, so we get a plus 2, which is good. And then we have intelligence is going to be a 13, which is great. We have a modifier to, in, um, to intelligence based off what the heck was that? Oh, no, that's the modifier, isn't it? No bonus. Our bonus for racial is the wisdom, and we wind up with a 16, and our charisma is going to be 12. So we're doing all right. We're almost there. It is time to make another decision. I should stop. Usually I stop now, people, and like, ah, it is time for me to take a break. But there are people here. Let us get at least to the point where we have done the background and completed the spells, and then I can leave it to you guys to start selecting equipment, and then I will take a break um, before I pass out, which may happen very shortly. Okay, so everybody... Uh, Big Kid Scott, Spirit Wolf, and um, inspira Inspiration Followers. I know it's break time, but we're not stopping, okay? We're just going to keep going. Okay, Gru. Gru is a, a ladrin. Gru. Uh, Gru. There's Gru. That'll do for Gru. Uh, you, if you don't like the name, it's all right. You can always change the name. Okay, a background. You can pick any background. Pick a background. Hashtag, pick a background. Got to be fast here, people. We've got to type fast, otherwise you're going to get left behind. Um, it depends on how you build it. I always, I always found it hard to understand what the deal was with Wild Shape until um, my buddy... Uh, no, you can't play. You can't select boule. We that's what I did yesterday. We talked about the boule yesterday. It's not boule time. Outlander, big kid, you got it. Outlander. Where's an outlander? Mm. If I've got a lozenger in my mouth, it's because I I need to survive. And we're not picking the um, Baldur's Gate one because uh, that's awful. Let's just stick this one in here instead. So we get a language. Woohoo! Nice. Um. We get athletics. Good thing we did not actually wind up dumping our strength, eh? We're now proficient in that as well. So we get a language. Pick a language. Henchman. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yellow. Yellow short ones. Um, now, hashtag. Uh, pick a language. Uh, there we go. I uh, see if probably somebody's gonna get the language in before I've even had a chance to put, type it in. There is a slight delay, so I'm gonna tell you what their languages are until something pops up on my chat, and then I'll stick that in. First thing, first come, first serve. Um, the abyssal, uh, celestial, the the thing, DD thing, um, deep speech, umber hulk. You can't, you can't. This, uh, where does it say umber hulk? <laughs> um, Sylvan, thank you. <laughs> that, that'll that'll do. <laughs> umber hulk. Spirit Wolf, are you wanting me to do the Umber Hulk monster uh, next week? Is that what you're trying to say? 
I think it's very likely uh, that will come up in the future. So Sylvan is the is the deal. We're going to pick it. Jaquel the scholar. Hello. Um, we've 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 already got somebody say Sylvan, but Sylvan and Elvin pretty close together. So we're done. Welcome, by the way. Um, I hope I got your name correct and didn't balls it up. Next, making some choices here. We need to pick some skills. We've already got athletics, but we need to pick another skill. So pick a skill. No, stop, stop it, people. No snails. Pick, pick a, pick a skill. Okay, what skills do we have access to? We can pick acrobatics, animal handling, arcana, deception, history, insight, intimidation, investigation, medicine. You know how I was saying you can pretty much do anything you like with a background. Uh, performance, persuasion, religion, sleight of hand, and stealth. Gambling. How did we get to gambling? It's it's not a skill. Insight. Thank you. <laughs> Inspiration follows. Um, insight it is. Are you are you looking at our oh, gambling? Oh, I know what you're after, Spirit Wolf. You're after this one. Gambling. So you want dice. Is that what you're talking about? You want dice? It's a musical instrument. How are you supposed to gamble with a musical instrument? Uh, people treat polymorph like a wild shape, but polymorph is more limited. Yes, it is. Snail crawl. How do we get snail crawl, people? I don't know. Pick. Pick. Uh, musical. Instrument. People, you need to get in here quick because somebody's going to put bagpipes again. Okay? I do. Folk hero. We've, we've, we've already done it. Sorry about that, Forest Rico. Although, Forest Rico, can we, can we go back now? Could we go back? Is it too late to go back? Folk hero. I could do that. Could do that. Um, I knew somebody was going to put wind, wind pipes now. Of course it is. Forest Rico. I'll tell you what. Because it's you. Because this is your first time building a character. It's folk hero. Which means I kind of have to change a few things. But that's alright. We can, we can deal with that. Okay. So now we have animal handling. We've still got Sylvan, and we need to pick that skill, which was insight. So we'll take insight, and now it's an artisan tool. Whoops, no musical instruments now. Sorry about that, people. I changed on you. He's a turncoat. Pick, pick a tool. When a tool proficiency, people. Sorry, jumped in there. I led you on, and then I changed changed it just at the last minute. And what did I say? I said if somebody like um, Forest Rico, who is new and never made a character before, gets a vote in here be after you guys, I will change it, even though you got it in first. Do you still love me? <laughs> um, I'm gambling with a fiddle. Herbal. Thank you. Spirit Wolf, you've got it. Spirit Wolf it is. Uh, for why can I find it? Is it my? Is it am I blind? We don't. We don't need to be. We're, we're a droid. We're already proficient with the herb, herbalist kit. Um, <laughs> we're already we're already proficient with the herbalist kit. So spirit wolf. Anybody who doesn't know, if you, you take the class droid, um, you, you actually get the herbalist kit as a proficiency. Okay, so you, you don't need to select it here. Um, so we we're selecting. Gambling with fiddle, no. Uh, jeweler. Okay. Ugly Weirdo, ugly, sorry, Ugly Weirdo has selected jeweler. We'll do that. And then we've got Rustic Hospitality, which everybody seems to think is useless, but it's all right. It's not really. Get your dice ready. You need eight sided dice. Are you going to roll? You're welcome, Forest Rico. I am doing my best here. Dentist. How did you come up with Dentist. <laughs> Hashtag roll uh, two d eight. Okay, Whew. it's hot in here. Oh, all right. We're still we're still alive though. Uh, ha torture? No, we're not doing torture. F four and two. Spirit Wolf, you got it. Um, so four is. This is for personality traits. You don't have to select these. You can write them in yourself if you want. 
I have a strong sense of fair play and I always try to find the most equitable solution to arguments. What a nice character. That's not like the characters we normally build. Um, if someone is in trouble, I'm always ready to lend a, a helping hand. Here we go. It's in. Right, so now you've got to roll some six-sided dice. We're doing ideals, bonds, and flaws. Hashtag. Get those six-sided dice out, people. Uh, roll three. D6. Okay, I'm waiting for my numbers to come through. Thank you, Spirit Wolf, and thank you, Shiner81. You guys were really quick. You already know when I do this that you got to have dice. I mean... If you if you come to a live stream that I'm doing and you don't have dice, you're probably on the you weren't paying attention. I get people to roll dice all the time. Okay, Spirit Wolf has got a four, a one, a five. So ideals four is mighty. If I become strong, I can take what I want, what I deserve. Ooh, it's evil. Really? Based off the the personality traits, I don't think that's going to work. So we're going to, I'm going to skip that one and go to your next number. Well, number one, respect. People deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. I'm going to stick, stick that one in, okay? Um, that doesn't mean you, your four is lost. I'm going to transfer the four into bonds because it didn't make sense. It, like, that didn't quite marry up. Uh, so the four now, uh, instead of the, the one, we'll use, uh, my tools are symbols of my past life and I, I carry them so that I will... Never forget my, my roots. Oh, that's a pun, isn't it? Drawed, roots, forget, past life. Okay. There we go. We'll pick that one. That's the four. And the last one will be a 15. Uh, no, not 15, a five. Five for floor. What's our five for floor? Secretly, I believe that things would be better if I were a torrent lording over the land. Oh my God, let's stick that in. <laughs> that is a complicated character now. Um, if, if not a bit twisted, <laughs> there's something weird going on with that one. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, <laughs> you do them all at once. Yeah, that, that, not super fair on people who are new, who've never been here before. Um, okay, alignment. I'm not picking an alignment, I'm just going to go neutral. Um, I don't want to, we could have a faith, what would be the faith, Let's, I'm going to type in the moon, unless somebody has a better idea, I don't usually put anything in here, uh, moon, when it's grew right, I feel like it, it makes sense that we put the moon, here we go, we worship the moon, uh, lifestyle, pick a lifestyle, hashtag, uh, pick a lifestyle, life, style what do we have we have wretched squalid poor modest comfortable wealthy aristocrat it's got to be one of those um sure i'll put that in big kid yours is probably better than mine uh dear. poor it is i saw the word poor Joe, I'm I'm trying not to I'm really I'm trying not to read what you're writing because it's 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 funny, okay? Um, and I'll get sidetracked again. I know that's what you're trying to do. Um, <laughs> hair, skin, eyes, weight, um, height, age, gender. We could do all that stuff later. I'm like you put that in. Moving on. Now I know what you're thinking. But what if I don't like my personality traits that I selected, or ideals, or bonds, or flaws, or I want to change them a bit? You can. Because the green button says trait, edit. Edit, ideals. So you can just press this, and you can go in here, and you can adjust it. If someone doesn't help, I'm always ready to lend a, hand, uh, a helping hand. There you go. A helping hand. What a small change I made, but it it's done, and it's now changed, okay? So you can edit this, nice and easy. Now, um, we have our notes. This is where we put our organizations, our allies, our enemies, any backstory or other stuff. 
There is a green button that says add notes. You just press that button and then type in what you need to. When you're finished, you just push, push the cross button and you're done. So we've done the background. <sighs> right, so we, we've got to be pretty close now. We can go back with this button. We can go forward with this button. We're going to go forward. You know how I said equipment? We're going to pick some equipment. Oh, cool. Blow me. Here we go. Press the button. So do we want a simple weapon or do we want a wooden shield? That's our first choice to make. No, it's not. We're not putting them on a land, land shark. Okay. <laughs> Pick. Uh, wooden. Shield. Shield. Or. Simple weapon. Now, tell me what the simple weapon is. Don't just say simple weapon. Otherwise, I've got to then ask another question. Here we go. What do we get? Uh, Nacho, Nacho, man, I'm always at work pretending to be on Zoom calls for uh, calls, so <laughs> breaking dice might give it away. Yeah, it probably would. Yeah, you can, you can, you can roll dice on a phone app. <laughs> Shield. There we go. Thank you. Inspiration follows. I appreciate it. That's that solved. Next, do we want a scimitar? Or a simple weapon. If we take a simple weapon, we need to know what that simple weapon is. Hashtag. Pick. Scimitar. Scimitar. Or. A simple weapon. If you don't know what the simple weapon is, just. Just say simple weapon and I'll, I will we'll sort it out. Here we go. Uh, my gosh, um, yeah, you probably can. You're making a snail druid after this? Well, why not? I mean, you've got a snail adventure due to go onto Patreon. I just haven't got around to finishing it. No, it's not a snail world. We made a world revolving around snails, didn't we? I forgot about that. That is there. Club. Uh, Jacques the Scholar, I think that is the simple weapon, club, we're going to club them to death, there we go, or club them until they're unconscious. Now, what do we want? Leather armor, explorer's pack, or druid focus? Uh, we've got that already, so we're going we're gonna to so pick something, don't we? Druid focus, a wand, a wooden staff, a totem, a sprig of mistletoe. Um, I don't think that wild shaping into a snail is a good idea. Small crossbow. No, no, that's not an option for us at this present time. Um, hashtag. Pick a, a droid. Droidic. Focus. Yep. Mistletoe, thank you, David Rose. That's got it. Mistletoe it is. Now, uh, a couple more choices. We can see these these things are already automatically what we get. Set of artisan tools. Oh, hang on. What was the, what would we have? We were a carpenter, so we're just going to take the carpenter tools. That makes that makes sense. Let's just stick with that. Now, I have made the mistake of pressing next after I've selected everything. Do not do that, because all of your work that you have done will be lost. Okay, once you've selected everything, you must go to Add Starting Equipment. See the big red button at the bottom in there? It says Add Starting Equipment. Press that button. Otherwise, you will have to go back and do everything again. And that would suck. Okay. Having a look, we're going to use our backpack so we can stick stuff in it. We are going to wield our club, even though we might not necessarily be wielding our club right now, just so that the machine, D&D Beyond, does all the maths for us, so we know what our attack modifier is and our damage equation is. Press that button to wield it. We're now wielding it. Uh, leather. If you don't want your um, droid to have no armor and to be, um, frankly, almost stark naked, you are going to have to wear it. Otherwise, it won't add this into the armor um, or AC calculation. So press it and wear the stuff. Okay, so you don't have to worry about it later. Okay, otherwise you'll have to add it later and don't want to do that. Shield, just to put the shield on and assume you've always got the shield going. It's armor, shield, 
mistletoe or weapon, like in the other hand. Nice and simple, pretty easy. Press that button, got the shield on. That'll add the uh, plus two to our armor class, which means we will actually be able to survive more than one round, hopefully. Next, let's press this button here to go further on, since we have selected our equipment. Equipped it and all, view our character sheet. Here we go. This is where it will uh, do all the calculations for us and then show us what our character sheet looks like. Along the top, you will notice all of the modifiers are listed here, so it's easy. The smaller number underneath, uh, um, well, the, the number that's of a bigger denomination that's in the circle, that is the score, and the one that you're going to use the most is the smaller number that's big, or above it, should I say, that's got a plus beside it usually, okay? Um, our armor class is calculated. It's only a... 13 it's not great can you see why i say you need to have a droid that has armor <laughs> right now we've only got leather but that's life all our skills have been calculated for us so we don't have to do that and little dot just means we're proficient and then our um proficiencies a little dot indicates we're proficient and our saving throws are calculated for us our passive wisdom um or passive perception passive investigation and passive insight all calculated our senses are determined and we have a list of what our proficiencies are, although you can't see most of them because my head is in the way. Uh, then you'll see uh, there's a section that says all actions, but we can go to uh, attack, shows us what we can do, unarmed strike, what it'll look like, our club, any actions we have are listed here, bonus actions if we have any, um, reactions if we have any, and then uh, there's inventory, which we're going to come back to very shortly. This is where all the gear is. We can buy some more stuff. We have 10 gold. Spells. You know, we had to come to this point. This, there's a point in any um, live stream when you're doing character building where we have to select spells. And you have to select the spells, people. I will select some of them. But I will allow you to balls things up if you like. Okay, let's hit the um, manage the spells button on the side there. Go up. And no one spells. Right now we don't know nothing. That's not going to be much good to us. We actually need to have two cantrips. Now I did sort of state like there's a cantrip you should just take. So we're going to turn on just the zero level spells which is the cantrips. And I'm going to just select Thorn Whip straight off the bat people. Okay and then you get to choose what you want after that. I, I, I don't mind. We only get one more cantrip at level one. I know it's a break time. We're doing the spells and then I take a break. And then we're almost finished. I know I know that. I know that. Hashtag. Pick a spell. Uh, 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 pick a cantrip. Remember I told you what the cantrips are that are probably worth taking? It's time to let me know what you think you want. Uh, where are we? Come on. Uh, bag of trail mix. <laughs> Too soon. Spectra Prismatic. Hello, welcome, how are you? Druidic Craft, no brainer. Fine, we can take that. That was easy. Druid Craft. Uh, now, I know somebody's going to say, you should take taken guidance. It's all right, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right, okay? <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> it, it's all right. <laughs> um, bonfire. How do we get Bonfire involved? Bag of bird set. Where are all these ideas coming from, people? You, you've, you've gone bananas again. Control flame. Okay, so we've got to do some first level spells now. We, uh, we get um, we, we know a few, <laughs> but we can only prepare four. <laughs> I know it's depressing. Okay, I totally understand. So I am going to pick one myself. Okay, and then you can do what you like after that. Um, it's all good. So I'm going to prepare Goodberry because Goodberry is a very good first level spell. I know, I know Healing Word is probably very good as well, but Goodberry is pretty awesome. Um, okay, so we're going to go with that one. So pick some first level spells. Bananas. How did we get to bananas? Bananas, Halloween, Thorn Whip, we've already got it. Okay, Con Control Flame. Did somebody say Control Flame? How did you come up with Control Flame? Where do you get Control Flame ugly? You know. Okay. Create Bonfire. So David Rose said Create Bonfire. Create Bonfire? Why can't I see Create Bonfire? 
it should have all of them available. Hang on, let's create bonfire a first level spell. Uh, I don't think that option's there. Okay, so pick a first level spell. Fairy fire. Okay, oh, we've got some spells there. All right. I haven't even had a chance to type it on there, but that's fine. Fog cloud. Yeah, foggy. Yeah, we can do that one. Um, David Rose and uh, Spectra, your your uh, input has been um, um, done, and we've got some um, inspiration follows. Fog cloud. I don't know. Um, uh, can you? You tell me. We we don't have those available. <laughs> You're 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 asking for create bonfire and control flame and it's not there. So we need a different one, people. Different. It's it, create bonfire. A cantrip. We've already selected our cantrips. We only get two. We're a druid at level one. That's it's done. <laughs> um. Okay, so. Let me just type in here, pick a first level spell. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, first level spell. I'm I'm losing it. I know I need to take a break, people. I totally get it. First level spell. One more. One more first level spell. Do I I need to read them out, do I? Um, absorb elements. Animal um friendship. Okay. Beast bond. Pfft. Charm person. Create or destroy water. <laughs> cure, cure wounds. Detect magic. Detect poison and disease. Um, earth tremor. Entangle. Uh, we've already got those. Healing word. Ice knife. Jump. <laughs> uh, long strider. Mm. Um, purify food and water. Snare. Speak with animals. Speak with animals. Uh, and thunder wave. And speak with animals. There we go. Spirit Wolf has gone with the speak with animals. We've got a droid who can actually speak with animals. Amazing. Well done. Okay, so that means we've got all our spells. So that's good. We have selected them. They're there. Use all the calculations for your spells are worked out. Okay, they're right here under spells. So if you're like, what do I roll to hit? Here it is, right there. Thorn Whip, plus five. Watch the damage. Oh, it's a six sided dice. And then it has some sort of effect, which is. Mm, more complicated and then fairy fire how does that work ah there's our dc for saving throws 13 cool so cool to have all that stuff there so we've got what we need but it's time for equipment and so manage so we go to inventory on our tab go to manage inventory and here we go we've got some money i can type into the chat pick some equipment hashtag come on fred hashtag pick equipment we have 10 gold pieces. Don't get carried away. Pick equipment. So this is where you go type, 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 type as fast as you can. And while you're typing in the different equipment that you think you look, have a look at the player's handbook. Um, I am going to go and take a break. And Arnold is going to look after you while I am taking the break. Okay, so um, I'll be back in about five minutes, maybe less.
right. Uh, and oh, oh yeah. Uh, okay, so you guys have selected some some equipment. I hope <coughs> while I've been away, uh, feeling better now um, and ready to continue. Ready to continue our merry way. Let us go over to here. And where am I? That's that. Okay, so, okay. Back to the screen. We are going to have to scroll down because I can see while I've been away, it's only been a small amount of time. Meat. Give me steak. You want steak. How did, we, how did you get to that? You want steak? <laughs> All right. Steak. Um, I don't think there's steak on here. I'm assuming you want rations. Is that what you mean? No, that's something else. There's so much stuff that's gone in here. Snail language. Bird food. Bird food? Rations. Your rations is your bird food. <laughs> We're going to have ten of those. How's that sound? We're going to meet a lot of birds. Here we go. Let's add that to our pack. It's so cheap, I'm not going to bother figuring out the... Um, do I really want to figure it out? Well, it's quite expensive. Did I just buy way too much? Maybe that was a mistake on my part. Oops. Maybe two of them next time. It should have been two. Uh, oh, dear. <laughs> uh, that's going to weigh a lot. Let's see if I can go in here <laughs> and uh, fix that. It's like, um... Rations. One day, one day, one day, day. Uh, starting equipment pack. Oh dear. I pressed the button and added a whole lot of. Um, uh, well, let's. We got two. We'll just say two. Yep. Let's just say that. Let's do that. <laughs> Currency. We're going to remove some some gold. Here we go. That's our, that's our food covered. Uh, just oil? You want oil? You mean a f oil flask? Sure, we can do that. Um, I think maybe we should also have a, um, a healer's kick, if you ask me, but um, oil flask. Oil flask is um, pretty cheap. So we'll get one of them. Oil flask, add it to a pack. There we go. I'm not going to worry about calculating that. That's just painful if I have to do that. Oil flask, we can afford it. Um, oil, bird seed, and some birds. Sounds like a fun time. How did we get there? Uh, three potted uh, man eating fly traps. Okay, good, good to know. Thank you. Uh, my only weakness is salt. <laughs> okay. Oil and bamboo. All oh, right. Okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> We're quite drawn. It would be Ah, dear. Droid craft. It's not just a compass. It does more. Um. Rope. Okay. We can get rope if you want to get rope. Rope. Uh, we'll just get the hemp rope. How's that sound? Sounds right to me. Hemp rope. Uh, add to our pack and then we'll go um, spend our one gold and remove it and we have eight gold left salmon smoked salmon nice thank you <laughs> uh, boondocks saints provided the uh, useful rope okay rope torches lantern oil. Well, R david ross is getting very practical here okay Five pounds of, very, that's very specific. Five pounds of salt. Really? Iron needles. <laughs> Intriguing. Okay, uh, so we've got here torch. We can go to torch. So if we're going to select torch, go torch. And we can grab a bunch of them because they're pretty cheap. Uh, say 10. Add them to a pack. Or put them on a uh, pack horse if you want to. You want a lantern? You want a lantern and a torch. You want a bedroll, a mess kit. What's a mess kit like? 
mess kit, how much that will cost us. That will cost us hardly anything. Let's add that item to our pack. We've got a mess kit. What else did you uh, suggest? You mean mess kit and a bedroll. Bedroll is here. Did we already have one? I don't know, I can't remember. And then into the pack, and a bedroll is one gold, so we're gonna we'll deduct that one, because they can actually do that with D&D Beyond. D&D Beyond doesn't like to remove anything unless it's just one gold piece. Sheesh. Uh, what else did you have here? Um, 10 foot pole, chalk, soap, flour. This feels very familiar. Um, I'm going to add healer's kit. I know what you're saying, but I'm a druid. Um, healer's kit means that if you run out of any ability to actually heal somebody magically or not magically, that at least you can stabilize somebody without having to depend on a medicine check with a DC of 10. You could still fail it. So let's just grab this thing. Every character should have a, medit um, a healer's kit. Like, it's, it's a no-brainer. You don't need to be skilled with it, you just have to have one. Okay. Bedroll oil, lantern. I don't think we can do Lanterns are pretty expensive. The last time I remember looking at lanterns, it was running in at about at least 10 gold, if not more. Bullseye lantern is, is like 10 year. I knew it was. Lantern, no. Uh, pole. 10 foot pole. If you can't buy one, just cut, cut a pole off the, uh, the tree. Okay, and you've got one. So we're going to have a pole. That's our equipment. We'll add that there. Uh, pole, what else? Chalk. Chalk, chalk, chalk. There we go. Some chalk. Add the... Uh, where is it? Chalk. Um, chalk only comes in boxes of 10. <laughs> you go down to Costco and you can only get them in boxes of 10. Or should it be boxes of 100? <laughs> um, okay. Soap. Yes, we want to stay clean. Uh, we also want to make sure the animals that want to eat us do not smell us. So let's go with five bars of soap. It's, that means everybody gets soap. It's good to be clean. Okay, uh, soap and flour and sh um, salt. Okay, I don't think that's going to be there, people. Uh, five pounds of salt and iron needle. Is the, no, 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 we, we, you're going to have to find another way. A uh, big bag of hickory sticks. How did how did that get blocked? Show. Still hungry? Held for review. Hmm. Not held for review anymore. Uh, 200 meters of silver piano wire. <laughs> okay, you guys are playing with me now. I know you are. All right. Okay, a bag of holding. You are not going to get a bag of holding with the amount of gold that we have. It's not happening. You're level one. Okay. And, oh, I didn't deduct the money for that. Deduct the five. It's five gold. You got two gold. You're not getting a bag of holding. A healer's kit. We have a healer's kit already. Do you not remember? That was part of our our gear that we got. We're, not, we're proficient with the healer's kit, and we also have the actual healer's kit, don't we? Don't we actually have a healer's kit? I'm pretty sure we do. L let me look through our equipment. Carpenter's tools. I've oh, got the carpenter's tools. Got a herbalist kit. Herbalist kit. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't think you could. I think they're like 25 gold pieces. I think they're actually really expensive. Equipment. Uh, no. And then the pack. Got the healer kits. Yeah. I don't think we'd be able to afford it. I think it would be way too expensive. If I go back here and go to, go to um, herbalist. Kit, there it is. Herbalist kit is, uh, you're going to be saving that up. Five gold. We could trade it out. Let's trade it out, shall we? We'll add it to a pack. I'll go back. Um, that was not meant, meant to rhyme. Let's go down. The healer's kit, can we, can, we, can we select it? We will reduce it. Delete it. Pew. There we go. You got the herbalism kit rather than the healer's kit. Are we happy? Mm, maybe. No. Nails. How? Nails. Do you want nails? I don't know. Can we actually get nails on this thing? Nails. How about some caltrops or some iron spikes? We're not stealing anything right now. Not a healer. 
Uh, okay, so let's let's see. So nails. I don't think it's going to have nails. Look, nail, nails. No, I'm not typing in snails. Nails. How about Caltrop? Caltrops are always nice uh, for everybody, but um, the person who stands on them. So add 20 items. How did I get 20? One item. Just add it to my pack. There we go. We've got a Caltrop. And um, possibly, possibly. So I, I don't know. We, we Have we spent every little cent that we have? We've bought we've bought a lot. We could have, we could get ball bearings as well. We could get a mirror. One or three, one or three, something like that. Okay, all right. I think that's it. We haven't spent everything, uh, or at least we we probably have spent most of that two gold that we can't actually deduct. Bag of miniature giant snails. No. Okay, fine. Bag of, bag of, little bag of sand. You serious? Little bag of sand. You can actually get a bag of sand, people. It costs nothing, because it shouldn't, because you go down to the beach with your bag and you fill it up with sand, right? <laughs> um, we're going to add that. <laughs> we're going to get a bag of sand. <laughs> there we go. What do you do with sand? Do you throw it in somebody's eye so they can't see anymore? Um, and then ball bearings. Ball bearings, always nice. Kind of handy. Put them in the right place, they work. Put them in the wrong place, they don't work. Okay, so that's just, I just one bag I do. Don't want that. Just add it to the pack. Uh, I can't remember how much it costs. Okay, we spent everything. We spent everything. It's it's done. It's done. Oh, oh my gosh. We got through this. Okay, so uh, we have everything uh, essentially done. Um, we... <laughs> We are carrying far more than we should. See, it says over carrying capacity in red under weight carried. So we're going to need a mule, okay? Or we get the dwarf to carry everything for us. I think that's uh, probably a better option. Let's get the dwarf to carry everything or a mule. So somebody has hopefully got um, eight gold pieces to buy the, the mule. <laughs> um, I wonder if you can... Can you buy a mule in this game? Does it come up with mule? Mule... Donkey or mule? It does. Eight gold pieces. Okay, well, we don't have gold, eight gold pieces, but we're obviously going to have to get a mule. Minions. That's right. Gru's got minions. Minions are going to be carrying all of this shit. Nice. Good idea. Well done. That that's actually solves a lot of the problems. I hadn't thought of that. It's good to have you around. Um, you answer all the questions that I can't figure out. Okay, there we go. We have, we've built a character. <laughs> Um, now you can actually export it. Uh, did I show you where the export button is uh, for printing? I didn't, didn't, did I? So I suppose I should do that. So let's do that now, and then we are finished. So, oops, don't do that. Okay, so go over to where the name is, little image picture over here, and it says, the little button says manage, go here, manage, and then scroll on down, and we can export it as a PDF, or we can share it, and there are options to print it. And we are we are all but done. Okay, you have you have achieved your goal. You have built your character. Whew. hard work, wasn't that? That was such a boring process, wasn't it? Was that fun? Was it not fun? I don't know. You tell you tell, you tell me. Was it fun for you? Is it? <laughs> okay. Ah uh, dear. Ah, uh, I'm I'm obviously um, not drinking enough water and probably dehydrated and, and losing my mind. To let you know, we do this every week. Every week, we build another character. Same day, same time. And uh, next week, I don't know what it'll be. I'm sure it'll be something, though. I mean, we will build a character class we haven't built before, more than likely. And um, that's that's all I have to say, because I am so tired. <laughs> I am exhausted. 
So I just want to say thank you to everybody who participated today. There's been a lot of you here, which is it's great to see that so many people have jumped in. I really do appreciate it. Um, I want to appreciate. I really appreciate all of my patrons who have been supporting me on Patreon to run the five different classes, including this every week live, uh, and everybody who's been uh, re-watching the live streams. I really do thank you for doing so, and all the edited videos. Um, now, wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, or the night or the wee wee early morning. Please look after yourself, your family and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.